But coca leaf uh, is something that I got the experience to try uh, earlier this year in Peru. Um, I went from Gainesville, Florida, you know, a couple hundred to possibly uh, a few more hundred feet above sea level mm. to up in the Andes Mountains where we were 9,000 feet above sea level. Um, and I hiked a mountain. I mean, chewing coca leaf. Right. And it's, no supposed to be, it's supposed fatigue. to be helpful for that, right? It's good for altitude sickness. Yeah. It's also good for stamina, energy. Um, you know, we we basically hiked this mountain for three and a half hours. No, not one time did I get hungry. Not one time did I get exhausted, winded. Uh, and I'm not a, a mountain hiker at all anyway. <laughs> so right. uh, it was just a cool, cool experience. And, and experiencing coca leaf firsthand, um, I didn't feel anything psychoactively yeah my my mouth got a little bit numb mm -hmm. like kind of when you go to the dentist and you feel that um you get novocaine or whatever they give you for anesthetic local anesthetic and you you know you'll drool out of your mouth for a while or you might bite yourself yeah um it's nowhere near that intense interesting um but that that's the same type of feeling it's almost like when you're finally coming off and you 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 feel it yeah but but you you can still chew and drink and do all the things that you would do. So what what is it comparable to in your opinion? Is there anything that you could compare it to? Um, so, I mean, energy wise, I would I would definitely say uh, something like um, a good strong cup of coffee or or energy uh, beverage, um, highly caffeinated beverage. Mm -hmm. But there's no caffeine in it, of right. course. Uh, but the stimulant, the stimulant effect is definitely there. But there's absolutely no, um, there's no psychoactivity. So what what happened? This is why I'm saying this is really interesting to me, because um, cocaine was the second alkaloid ever discovered. So right. ever isolated, morphine was the first, cocaine was the second. We know the history of both of those substances. What today. year was cocaine uh, first created? Wasn't it like before World War One? Like yeah, it was in the eighteen hundreds. Eighteen hundreds, yeah. In the mid eighteen hundreds, I believe. Wow. And maybe we can Steve yeah. can fact check. Steve will more. find it for us. <laughs> but um, morphine was eighteen o two, and I think cocaine was eighteen twenties. Um, let's see if my trivia is uh, 1859. 1859 by the it? German alchemist. Yeah, Albert Neiman. Albert Neiman. So these guys were both pharmacists. Um, he was a pharmacist, and then uh, Frederick Surturner was the one that uh, isolated and purified morphine for the first time. Both Germans, both pharmacists. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and when cocaine was realized, uh, originally cocaine was thought to be a, a, a good treatment for other addictions <laughs> and really? so yeah uh, heroin was originally marketed as um treatments for addictions as well and some of these things it's wow. just wild crazy yeah. where where things went um the thing is is that people started using these things and stopped using the other things that they were having problems with because these were much better right <laughs> so it, that reminds me I don't mean to interrupt, yep. but there's this guy that we actually have coming in here soon from Germany who f took samples from Egyptian mummies. Oh yeah, from like thousands of years ago, and he found cocaine. Yeah, have you heard of this? Yeah, yeah. So we know, um, and in fact, in the meeting that I was describing to you, this ethnopharmacological search for psychoactive drugs, um, there's a lot of. Um, uh, ethnobotanists, archaeologists that were in that meeting and talking about many things, some of which were really fascinating to me because they found in Egyptian tombs, they found in um, tombs in the Andy Mountains, right? People were buried. Really? People were buried with uh, coca leaf either in their mouths or in their body, like. They would have them in bags with them. Um, and so coca leaf has been revered. And it's interesting, if you look at the history, we always think it's a South American thing. But coca leaf actually spread uh, across parts of Europe and into Northern Africa. Mm. So the, the climate is similar. They could mm. grow um, the plants. Uh, and, and, you know, not exactly the same 
species, um, but but a very cool story that was unfolding there where they found these, not only have they found cocaine in a lot of these, but they found um, uh, other psychoactive substances and mushrooms, um, different types of things uh, mm-hmm. that, that have also been been shown. What does he say, Steve? Hennet uh, Tau was was the mummy that they found cocaine in. A and priestess it- from uh, ancient Egypt and other remains, the toxicologist and her team, they found this. They found the coke though. They found uh, the cocaine, traces of cocaine, nicotine, nicotine. hashish yeah. in the mummy's hair, bone, and soft tissue. Whoa. Yeah, so it's it, it, it's it's pretty well known that substances were being used. There was another talk at this meeting um, where many of the stories um, in, in the Old Testament of the Bible, which is the foundation for you know our three main global religions: Christianity, Judaism, and uh, Muslim, um, the Quran. So many of the stories that are in there. Um, are thought to be explained by hallucinogenic substances. Yeah, being there's used, lots right? of theories. Yeah, and so it was interesting discussions in the meeting and talking about this. But uh, it, there had always been a lot of speculation, but really no hard evidence um, right. until the last few decades when they've been able to actually get into some of these tombs and find right. substances that were buried with people uh, when they were either mummified or just buried and in, in entombed with many, many um, different trinkets or, or pouches or whatnot that were filled with um, psychoactive substances. Yeah. Coca seems like it could be similar to nicotine or caffeine, maybe, um, some in that group. Um, so why is it illegal in the U.S.? Is it specifically because it's connection to cocaine? So interestingly, yes. Uh, first, the answer is the connection to cocaine. But inter- more interestingly, actually, the U.S. has it in a restricted category of Schedule Two of the Controlled Substances Act, which means it's it's legal to use. It has a medical benefit. Um, oh, really? Although, like cocaine, like for well, because cocaine is still extracted from the plant itself, right. and so if you make the plant Schedule One, then you can't actually use it to get to the pharmaceutical grade. Cocaine, right, because they use it for like eye surgery, eyes and, and those like surgery, that. So, yeah. yeah. And in fact, all the coca leaf that that has been imported into the United States for the last I don't know hundred some years um, has all been done by the Coca Cola company. And Coca Cola had their original formula had uh, coca leaf, and it had the cola nut, so you had the Coca Cola um, name, and. Um, eventually they they made the formula where they took the cocaine and the alkaloids related to cocaine out of the coca leaf extract. But co- Coca-Cola and Coke Zero are the two formulas that still contain coca leaf extract, but obviously no cocaine um, in those formulas. And Coke, Coca-Cola tried to remove that and distance themselves completely in the 1980s from the coca leaf trade um but when they did that and they came out with new coke there was a huge backlash of yeah. people saying this is terrible yeah, this stuff sucks taste, right? <laughs> so they were forced to go back to putting the extract in and so they import uh coca leaf into a company in new jersey called the stepan company and that company is a company that then processes the coca leaf separates out the alkaloids, purifies them, uh, sends them to a company that purifies them for the pharmaceutical industry and the forensics industries. Um, and then the the remaining extract goes to Coca-Cola as part of the formula. So, so they're the only ones who are allowed to have right this Right now, they, they seem to have a monopoly on it. So we're finally getting to the point where... Um, you know, I it took me two years to get approval and connections and everything to get coca leaf onto my DEA license so that I could do research with it. So, but we finally crossed all the bureaucratic hurdles. The last hurdle, believe it or not, it's approved by the federal government in the U.S. that I get it. It's approved by the government in Peru that they 
provide it to me. The last hurdle is a air carrier that will bring it into the United States. An air carrier? <laughs> yeah, like FedEx or DHL. So you have to go con or, contact one of them or and get them to. So too. they they're 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 not interested in carrying a controlled substance oh my in God. large quantities. Uh, we'll get it worked out at some yeah. point, but it's. I got a it's guy. Been a problem. <laughs> yeah, I got a guy for I, you. I could potentially go down there myself and do it with because yeah. I have the import permit. But we got Roger Reeves. We got. I don't know if you remember Roger Reeves. We get this guy who is a. Uh, he was a pilot for the cartel back in mm. the '80s or whatever, and he worked. He hired this guy named Barry Seal. During I have you heard of Barry Seal wow. during Iran Contra? Anyways, he was he was smuggling like millions of dollars of pot and cocaine every single day between Mexico and the U.S. Oh, I don't know. He still got planes. Yeah. They made a movie about him. I'll right? hit him up. Yeah. yeah, they did. It's called uh, American something. American something. I have to find. It's that. with American uh, Made. There American Made. Tom Cruise. Yeah. American Made. Oh, Tom Cruise. One yeah. of his lesser. Numbers. I'll get you his number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we can work that out. But uh but yeah, it's been um it's been a process to get it. <laughs>